What's one of the best barrel-proof bourbons on my shelf? Let's find out. What is going on everybody? Nathan here with The Everyday Drinker bringing you guys a brand new video. Today, we're going to be doing a blind and we're going to be doing a blind of my six favorite barrel-proof bourbons at the moment. And I'm sure you wanna know what those six barrel-proof bourbons are, but before I let you know what those are, gotta let you know about the 5,000 subscriber giveaway. This bottle of Blanton's could be yours, like I've been saying. Just hit that subscribe button and this bottle will be given away to one of you lucky subscribers. But without further ado, let's bring on the contestants. Contestant number one goes to Elijah Craig, batch A123. This bottle of bourbon is barreled at 125.6 proof, 62.8% alcohol, and is 12 years old. Contestant number two goes to the Larceny Barrel Proof Batch C922. This bottle right here is proofed at 126.6 proof. It is a weeded bourbon and it won Whiskey of the Year last year for me. Contestant number three goes to Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Strength picked by Bottle Republic. This bottle is proofed at 131.9 proof. It is a Tennessee whiskey and we are going to find out if that Tennessee whiskey has any luck against these straight bourbons. Contestant number four goes to the Old Forester Single Barrel Barrel Strength. This is from the Adelphia store and this is bottled at 126.1 proof out of Warehouse G Floor 5. Contestant number five goes to the Blue Note Juke Joint Uncut Unfiltered SLB Pick. This right here won the blind from all of the Blue Note Juke Joint Uncut Unfiltered. This is a barrel at 123.3 proof. And finally, contestant number six goes to Stag Junior Batch 15. This is barreled at 131.1 proof out of the Buffalo Trace Distillery. So now that we know what bourbons are in these glasses, we're gonna do a bracketed system. It's gonna be a little bit different than our traditional blind. We're gonna do bracket one from the inside, two in the middle, three on the outside. And then out of each bracket, the winner is going to move on to the winner's finals. And then out of the losers, the losers are going to move into the loser's bracket. And we're going to have a loser's winner's final. So without further ado, let's move on to round number one. These two right here, let's see what they have to offer. Let's start on our left here. That's straight cherry cola. I get a little bit of like a coffee on the nose, but it, it, it's it's like a medicinal cherry on the nose, skin of the palate. So it's a little bit drier on the palate, and it makes me think that that's the Jack Daniels because I get a little bit of banana on that, but I have absolutely no idea. And like I said in that video earlier in the week, Jack Daniels, the bottle has opened up so beautifully, it doesn't have that harsh burn that I had in the very beginning of the bottle. And if this is the Jack Daniels, it's a very beautiful sip, but I don't know if anything else on this bar top has that banana forwardness that this glass at the moment does. But that's an enjoyable sip. Let's move into glass number two. Very different nose, very different nose. It's a little bit more oak forward. I get a little bit more cherry on this. I love this nose a little bit more than the nose on this one. It's, it's like a sweeter style, like fruit salad in a way, but then I get this like toasted sugar on top. It's much more rich. It coats the entire palate. Whereas glass one, it was like flavor blast right off the bat. But this glass here, it, it's a very oily, a viscous mouthfeel. Coats your entire palate. Gives you everything that you want out of these barrel proof bourbons. Oh yeah. This right here, this glass two, definitely moving on to the winner's finals. This one here, moving on to the losers. So let's move on to round number two. Round number two, we're gonna start on our right hand side and let's see what this glass has to offer. This one here, it, I get a touch of coconut on the nose. It has a little bit more of a bread note on there as well. It smells sweeter, it smells a little earthy. I like that nose a lot. Let's get into the palette. That's so different. It's a little bit more um, like baking spice forward. Also has a little bit more of an herbal quality to it on the palette. Has a little bit of that like black tea note in there. And it's, it's very, very enjoyable. 
but it's not something that I would always go towards, which is very interesting. Compared to those first two, I think we're a little bit better than this one, but you can't have a loser going against this guy unless this moves on to the loser's bracket and loses in that. So let's move on to the glass on our left. Oh, that's milk chocolate and syrupy sugar. That's a vanilla, that's chocolate. Oh, that is a beaut. Wow, that nose is insanely delicious. I get a little bit of butterscotch. This is everything that you would, this is your picturesque bourbon in a nose right here. This is insanely fantastic on the nose. But the nose isn't where it's at, let's get into the palate. Oh, that is leaps and bounds better than this one here. Leaps and bounds. It's rich. It gives you that hug going down, but it's not insanely like, wow, this is fire going down. Like, I don't think I said these are all 123 proof to 130, like two proof at that Jack Daniels 131.9, almost 132. But this, I think it might be on the lower end of those proofs. It's oaky, it's sweet, it's vanilla. I get a little bit of an espresso note on that. Wow, and then there's a touch of just like that dry maple that I usually always get on a barrel proof that I really enjoy. It's not a sweet maple, but it's like that maple char chip, maple smoke in a way. Really good. The glass on the left, definitely moving on to the winners. Glass on the right, moving on to the losers. Final bracket here to find out which is the final one moving on to the winner's bracket before we get into the loser's winner. So, glass on the left here. Let's find out what this one is all about. So I get a little bit of like a vanilla frosting, like that, uh, the royal frosting on this. It has a little bit more of like a, a, it seems like it has a little more of a rye spice in there, but I don't want to say that because it could be the, the weeded bourbon because sometimes on weeded bourbons, I find a little bit more of a spice kick on there, but it's what that is. It's a little bit more of like that earthy quality that sometimes weeded bourbons bring. I get a little bit of an orange peel on this. It smells so nice, but let's get into the palate. It's definitely orange forward on that palate. I like that a lot. That's a very, very nice, nice, that's a very nice finish too. It's not, it doesn't take overtake from oakiness into bitterness. It lingers sweet. It stings the tip of your tongue. It's a higher proofer for sure. I like that a lot. It's sweet, it's very well balanced. But let's move on to the glass on our right here and see if it has anything to kick it off the glass on the left. This one is a little bit more on that darker red fruitness. I get a little bit more of like an oaky presence on this glass. I get a touch of a leather. Yeah, this one here, it's, it's darker. It senses to be a little bit more on that, like a little more aged side of it. So let's get into the palette. This one here has a little bit more of that banana note. So it's banana. It's got a little nuttiness in there. This one definitely could be the Jack Daniels. I could I could have been completely wrong on my first glass moving on to the losers, but I don't know. I like that flavor profile, but I don't know if I like it more than the one on the left. I really don't know. Let me get into the glass on the left here one more time. Yeah, I have to give the win to the glass on the left. And the loser is moving on to the right. So here's where it gets fun. We're gonna take all three of these losers and we are going to put them up to each other and see which one of these losers is the best. And that winner out of the losers is gonna move into the winner's finals. So as I'm spinning this here, I wanna know what bourbon you think is gonna win this because you obviously know what three are in the finals. And at this moment, I have absolutely no idea what is going to be in the finals and what is going to move on from the loser's bracket to the finals. So we're done spinning around. We're going to separate these a little bit and we're going to move from our left to our right really, really quick to find out which of these is going to move on. Oh, that's maple syrup. It, it, this one has opened up. 
I let these sit for about 20 minutes before I started recording this video. And this one here, the nose is just maple syrup and like pancakes. It's just super, super breakfasty. And is breakfasty even a word? I don't even know. I'm making my own vocabulary. I'm drinking high proof bourbon. And I hope you guys are enjoying this video. That's that is breakfast in a glass. This it, it, this one here in the middle, it's a little bit more musty. It, it smells like a spring rain on like a nice warm day. You know that smell that you get like rain on asphalt. That's what this kind of smells like. This one has a little bit more of a butterscotch forwardness. This is it. All three noses are very very different. I like the nose on the glass on the left, and then I go I go left right middle for my nose. But you got to go into the palate. So let's move on to the glass on the left and see if the palate has any of that breakfastiness on the palate. That breakfasty quality definitely moves into the palate. Very, very pleasant. Very, very enjoyable sip. So we want a glass in the middle. Now that earthiness, it's still there. That spring rain on asphalt, it's still there. I hope I don't taste asphalt on the palate. Let's find out. I get a little bit of a malted chocolate on that palate. It's sweet, it's enjoyable, but it's a little bit drier, and I don't think it has anything compared to the glass on the left. So the glass on the right, it's a little bit more of that earthy quality to me. I'm getting a little bit more of like a lemongrass, I'm getting a little bit more of like, almost like a, a there's a little bit too much, I don't know what it is in this glass here, but it's swaying me towards more of a scotchy taste. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Sometimes that happens to me. I had that happen to me with Woodford Double Oak. I don't know why that happens every so often. I pick out a single grain in this that just sends me towards a scotchy styled malted, not my cup of tea. So the glass on the left here is moving on to the finals. And these two right here are our final two. I'm gonna keep it like that. This one here is six, this one here is five. And without further ado, we're gonna spinny do rod these around, and that one from the loser's bracket, you never know, could come in first freaking place. If you've made it this far into the video, check out the Patreon link down below. So without further ado, let's get into the glass number one. It's so chocolatey. It's got a little nuttiness in there as well. It's like a chocolate pecan. This one is so well-rounded. I get a touch of that leather. I get cherries. Oh man, that nose is nice too. This is that orange punchy one. I can get that right off of the rip. Orangey punchy. And this is that, this is, this is the losers. I can almost guarantee you that this one right here is the losers bracket winner because of the breakfasty, the quality that you get off of that nose. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna fast forward through this part here so that we can get to the final result, which is what you all are waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our lineup and this is most likely the longest video that I've ever uploaded onto this channel. And if you have enjoyed it, please smash that like button. But without further ado, let's find out which of these six barrel proof bourbons came in sixth place. Sixth place goes to bottle number three. And bottle number three, ooh, ugh. <laughs> Blue Note, uncut, unfiltered. That is a big, big upset. Holy cow, I was not expecting that whatsoever for the Blue Note to come in last place out of this lineup. Holy cow. Let's find out what came in fifth place. Fifth place goes to bottle number five. And five, goes to the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Strength. All right, very interesting. We're into our top four, our winner's bracket. In fourth place, we have bottle number two. Bottle number two goes to Elijah Craig Barrel Proof A123. Now we're into our top three. In third place goes to 
Number one. Number one. Larceny C922. Now we have our final two bottles. And I'm pretty sure I've said many, many times on this channel that this Old Forester single barrel, barrel strength from Adelphia's is my favorite bottle of bourbon on the shelf. And I think that it's better than the Stag Junior Batch 15. We're gonna find out right now if it actually is. Again, I've done this many times and I know you all are waiting to find out if it's the truth. In first place goes to bottle number four. Bottle number four is Stag Jr. and six is the Old Forester. Guys, this these last two were neck and neck. They were going back and forth. And it was absolutely insane just to go through this. You know, that you know, I had six pours of this these barrel proofs in less than probably 30 minutes. So I hope you enjoyed it. Stag Junior Best 15 came in first place, whereas the old Forester single barrel barrel train from Delphia's came in second place and you know these two could have flip-flopped any other day but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you drop that like hit the subscribe button but until next time this has been nathan with the everyday drinker cheers